I will ask uh, uh, his beatitude to say a few words to us. He speaks beautiful English and uh, he's theologically very acute and I would like for him to speak to us directly. So uh, we are very glad to be with you. Thank you. It is a great blessing for us. We are very uh, happy to see the, uh, uh, the Patriarchate strength and uh, ability to continue in the midst of all the difficulties that you're being faced with. And we pray for you and uh, we ask you to pray for us because we are faced with many other difficulties, different ones, but in the end, they're all spiritual battles toward the kingdom of God. So can you please tell us a few words? We don't want to take too much of your time. I know there are people waiting for you, but we would love to hear you and the people love to hear you. And we thought that we shouldn't leave Jerusalem without hearing a word of encouragement from you for us and about the faith, about the Orthodox faith and about our understanding of the kingdom of God and how we get there. Uh, thank you very much. For if you would words. please close the door, somebody. Uh, no, even if you close, it doesn't work because this is, uh, you are a witness of one of our small community <laughs> that uh, is here. They come from the northern part of Israel. Ah, okay. It's uh, nearby the borders, Lebanese border, right? And um, this small community has built a church, which is, I think, is the biggest in the Middle East. <laughs> they are uh, so proud, right? And actually, the whole community is uh, a big family, right? That's good. Yes, and now they came to me and uh, because they want to complete the church, and uh, they were so desperate. They need help. To help them financially. Uh -oh. Yeah. To cover all. Can we help maybe? Yes, you can help, of course. If you can uh, put us in contact with them. Yes, that's right. And the next time maybe we'll visit them when we bring a group. Yes, that's, this is the best way. Yeah. So this is, I promise them. And when you promise, you have to keep your promise, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll help you keep your promise. <laughs> That's why this is the way. <laughs> the way, the way. <laughs> so this is why they are here, and uh, I try to help them as much as we can because they have so many responsibilities and uh, many obligations, and they have so many churches. Many you needs. Know, the the Petri Gate here is the mother of all churches, right? Is the it is from here that Christianity has spread all over the world and the church were expanding. So and the Patriarchate plays an important role in the here because it's the only uh, religious, ecclesiastical, Christian institution that uh, has a, a history of uh, almost 2,000 years, right? And the Patriarchate's history has been uh, continuous and uh, unbreakable. And uh, today the Patriarchate plays an important role here in the Middle East, first in Jerusalem and uh, in the broader area of the Middle East. And I'm saying this because the Patriarchate is actually the, the embodiment of the sacred history, right? And what is the sacred history? The sacred history is the history of salvation is the history that began on Mount Sinai with Prophet Moses and culminated in this uh, uh, part of the earth, in this land, with the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ in uh, Bethlehem, and of course with the crucifixion, his passion and his resurrection here in uh, Jerusalem. Therefore, you can uh, understand what is the significance and the importance of the Patriarchate in uh, maintaining the sacred history, maintaining all those uh, holy places that actually those holy places are uh, the undeniable uh, witnesses and testimonies to the sacred history. And the strength of the Patriarchate is that uh, has managed with the help of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, with the, through the, throughout the ages with the order of the brotherhood of the holy tomb 
has managed the Petri gate here to keep and uh, to safeguard and uh, serve the holy places, and the holy places have uh, uh, sustained and uh, remained as uh, places of worship. This is very important. And this uh, practice continues until today. If it wasn't for the brotherhood here of the holy tomb, uh, most of the holy places would have been vanished or destroyed or disappeared, as it has happened in many cases, right? When we talk about holy places, we talk about places that are, uh, belong to the sacred history, places that are uh, uh, equally uh, holy and sacred to the Jews, to the Muslims, and to all Christians as well, right? Uh, we have uh, many examples. For instance, there is the Temple Mount, which is the holiest place for the Jewish people. This is the, their uh, place of their forefathers, right? This is why they came here. They want to be here. At the same time, this is this was uh, it is a holy place for us Christians because with Jews we share common roots and common trunk. Just the branches are diverting, right? Uh, with the Muslims as well, we share a lot in common. This is why here uh, the people, they prefer to use the word not monotheistic so much as much as Abrahamic faith, right? It's more uh, inclusive, more accurate, right? Because uh, to use the word monotheistic is not that very clear because there are two kinds of monotheism. One is the moral monotheism that we belong to, and the other is just monotheism something very abstract. It's uh, fleeting uh, ideas, ideologies, etc. right? <laughs> you understand what I mean by this? No beginning, no end, right? Mm -hmm. No. And uh, the Patriarchate here, everybody is recognizing and admitting <coughs> the role of the Patriarchate. And this is why the Patriarchate does not need to produce any, any paper uh, to prove its uh, legal status. I mean, the Patriot by itself uh, has a, a legal uh, status because everybody who is in this area, he came and found us in here, right? So this is why the Patriot enjoys great uh, respect. And the Patriot is recognized as the only uh, religious Christian institution uh, that represents here all the people, that represents all Christians, and uh, the Patriarchate plays an important role in defining in the future, let us hope, the political and the diplomatic status of, uh, and the religious status of uh, Jerusalem, especially the, the old city. Now, the uh, the Patriarchate here is considered to be the, uh, the uh, to, to be the identity, the cultural and religious identity of uh, the Christians who are living here, and I mean all Christians. Uh, the the Patriarchate here is uh, the only Christian institution that is totally independent, autonomous, and autocephalous. You know what? Doesn't mean autocephalos, you know, that doesn't mean automobile, right? It's a Greek word, right? So, as for all other churches here, their point of reference is not in here, it is somewhere else. If you take the Roman Catholics here and all the orders that they have, their point of reference is Vatican. So, the Vatican, the Pope is in charge for the Roman Catholic uh, uh, institutions and orders here. The same applies to the Anglicans, the same applies to the Lutherans, even to the Oriental Church is the same. For instance, the Copts, the Patriarch there uh, is in, uh, in uh, Egypt, in Cairo. The, uh, the Ethiopians, they have their uh, uh, head, their office is in, uh, in Addis Ababa. The same applies to the Syrians and other communities that are existing here, right? So. Uh, now, the 
Patriot Gate today plays an important role because the, spir the spiritual jurisdiction of the Patriot Gate uh, covers the state of Israel, the Palestinian state or the occupied territories, and of course the Hashemite Kingdom of uh, Jordan, right? And the Patriot Gate is considered to be a state within a state. This is, we have also our ecclesiastical courts, we have our schools, and many other uh, institutions. And uh, the contribution of the Patriarchate to the land here, to the Holy Land, first of all, and then to the Christians, is uh, immense and uh, tremendous. But of course, today there are all sorts of uh, problems, because Jerusalem was and continues to be and will always be the focus of uh, attention of the whole world, right? Why? Because, uh, as I've said, Jerusalem is connected, associated with the sacred history. And the sacred history is not something uh, abstract. Uh, it's, not, it's not something that belongs to the human inventiveness or to the human speculation, right? Because uh, uh, we as Orthodox, having this uh, Greek uh, background, the heritage of, uh, of philosophy, the heritage of mythology, right? We are fed up with the speculation and inventiveness, but uh, the Orthodox faith has nothing to do with speculation. And I'm sorry to say that today, in even the Orthodox Church in the Europe or in the States uh, is considered to, is understood in this way, in a speculative way, in a philosophical or in an abstract way, right? And this is why we never hear from uh, clergymen or from uh, high hierarchs the word salvation. They talk about all sorts of good things. They talk about moral issues, right? Or they understand Eastern Orthodox Christian, uh, Orthodox Christianity in terms of uh, morals. But this is totally unacceptable and totally wrong because nobody is talking about salvation and the importance of the soul, right? Because the human being is not just a biological constitution. There is something additional. And this additional is what is, is the inner man. It is the soul. It is the spirit, right? And as much as the, our body needs special biological food, material food, in the same way, the soul needs spiritual food, food. And this is what the Patriarchate of Jerusalem does, and we are proud of it. Why? Because uh, Jerusalem uh, is a place, uh, very a unique place. And why it is unique? What, what makes Jerusalem to be so special? It's a big question. Because uh, Jerusalem is equally sacred and holy, not only to us, as I've said, but also to Muslims, uh, not Arabic Muslims, but uh, non-Arabic Muslims, to Ottoman Muslims, to Asiatic Muslims, and it is equally sacred and holy to the Jewish people, right? Uh, the answer is that uh, this place here uh, has the unique privilege and the unique uh, blessing to have been, first of all, uh, blessed by the blood of the prophets. All the prophets were assassinated, right? And uh, above all, uh, this place has been uh, uh, watered and therefore blessed and sanctified by the very blood of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is therefore the blood uh, of the incarnate Logos, right, of our Lord Jesus Christ that has made this part of the earth to be so special and so unique. I mean, the whole creation, as uh, Prophet uh, David says, is uh, sacred and, uh, and uh, perfect because everything made of God is perfect, right? But as for this part of earth, there is this uh, specific uh, significance that it is connected with the mystery of the incarnation, the mystery of the divine dispensation, or economia, right? And uh, it's not only that our Lord has uh, walked this land, but uh, he has said and blessed his sweat and his uh, blood. This is why St. John of Damascus says that he 
uh, likens the holy places, the holy land, with the cross. That is to say, we venerate the cross of Christ, we venerate a certain wood, right? And uh, we do receive from uh, the wooden cross, we receive a blessing, we receive energy, we receive uh, uh, divine uh, energy, right? Why? Because of Christ who was crucified on the cross. This is why how the cross becomes an instrument of blessedness, an instrument of grace and energy, divine energy, right? So in the same way, because of Christ who walk on this land, and not just walk on this land, but he had watered it with his blood, and at the end of the day, he was hosted in the bosom of this uh, earth because he was buried here, right? This is why this land is becoming uh, an instrument of blessedness. This is why it's not by accident that the Church of Jerusalem, uh, in all our prayers, we invoke the grace of the holy tomb and of the holy places to the pilgrims and those who are living in here. So your presence here, it's a great uh, blessing, uh, not only for you, but for us. For you, it's a great, great blessing because you have given this opportunity to be here and to come like uh, Apostle Thomas, right? Mm -hmm. To see with your physical eyes, to understand with your spiritual eyes, and above all, to touch with your physical senses all those places, all those stones that bear uh, witness to the crucifixion to the preaching, to the miracles, and above all, to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? And uh, we here, uh, at the same time, this blessing is not only for you personally, individually talking, but it is for your families and for your countrymen. Uh, at the same time, your presence here is a blessing for us, and when I say for us, I mean for the Christians here, and for us, the fraternity here, the Patriarchate, because uh, you are, uh, your presence is a sign of uh, encouragement to our mission here, and it is a sign of encouragement to our Christians who are living in this uh, area, uh, because why it is an encouragement? Because like this, our Christians here, they feel that they are not abandoned, they are not forgotten, right? And that Christians from around the world, uh, when they come here, they uh, share their uh, happiness, they share their sadness, they share their good things and the bad things, right? Because uh, as St. Paul says, when one member of the body uh, suffers, the whole body suffers, when one body is, uh, enjoys everything, right? So, <coughs> I hope and pray that uh, your uh, pilgrimage, which is called the pilgrimage of the Oriya, uh, it is called the pilgrimage of the Oriya, you pilgrims, pilgrimage here. Why? Because uh, the very and ultimate and absolute purpose of the church, and I'm sorry to say that I speak of the Orthodox Church, uh, is precisely this, to help us, to make us worthy, to attain to the experience that the disciples of Christ had uh, on the day of transfiguration, or metamorphosis to use the Greek word, on Mount Tabor. It was there that uh, Christ he himself, before his passion and before his resurrection, he manifested his glory to his disciples, and uh, the disciples as much as the Holy Spirit uh, was allowing them, they could uh, see with their physical eyes, but above all, they could uh, uh, contemplate, to be more precise, with their spiritual eyes, what the glory that Christ manifested. And what is the glory that Christ manifested? It is the light of the kingdom. It is what we call paradise. It is what we call the ultimate purpose of the church. The ultimate purpose of the church is precisely this, to make us worthy to attain 
to the to share right to the theoria the theoria in the, the language of the church fathers means to come to a state of deification and this is what is all about the church and this is what all about the meaning of the sacramental life people today unfortunately they have a moralistic approach of uh, the sacramental life of uh, of the church and this is totally wrong in the church our approach should not be emotional right should not be moralistic we should not uh, think of ourselves that being good people that it means that we have attained to the uh, vision and contemplation of the glory of god because the purpose of the church is to help us to go through a process and what is process the process is to go through purification right and then uh, to become uh, uh, vessels of the holy spirit in order to attain to deification to i mean to attain to the vision uh, and contemplation of the glory of god this is what is the kingdom of god this is what we call paradise and uh, i hope and pray that your uh, pilgrimage of theoria here in the holy land would uh, be a dynamic experience that this would dwell in your hearts and you should not keep it only for your own uh, benefit but you when you go back to your uh, uh, country please try to convey and communicate this uh, experience to your own uh, relatives to your own children to your own uh, friends and above all to your own compatriots and uh, so that they would be encouraged to have their own pilgrimage here in uh, the holy land and i'm saying this for one reason and the reason is that jerusalem has this unique uh, power to help people to get rid of any kind of confusion and misorientation because today we are living in a time that all of us willingly and willing consciously and consciously we fall victims of what we call new order and this new order is the word of satan who is borrowing the language of saint paul the new order is christ he is the new adam this is the new order this is the new times right and today globalization it's the worst enemy of all of us because globalization is the act of the evil powers and this is why where people they fall uh, victims and you look what is going around us they today they in in the name of the human rights no dignity no respect i mean uh, uh, animals are treated uh, are given more dignity than the human being right today have come to a point that uh, we are not we are about not to know what is our biological uh, uh, status yes or not a function and functioning right so no more comments so jerusalem because it is connected with the uh, sacred history the sacred history began in here and is going to end up in here and as saint john the evangelist says this is the place precisely that the last day will take place yes happy mer so you welcome and god bless you and uh, go on and uh, like the disciples of christ spread the good news that you have already heard you have seen you have gathered from your short uh, pilgrimage experience here in the holy especially in jerusalem thank you we thank you too well, thank you for your time and thank you for your words that uh, give us a lot to think about and thank you for your uh, good book I mean, that you've oh. done a great job but i think it's better that you do what saint john chrysostom was doing he never uh, had any office a desk or any library to write theses and the books what he did it was all sermons homilies right so they say you have to do what you have written please 
try from the bima, from the ampon, to preach. To preach, right? Preach. Because uh, people they want direct uh, contact. They want direct communication. Absolutely, and that's why. And John Chrysostom is. Uh, I highly recommend him for uh, everyone to have him as his spiritual director because this is. Many people are complaining today that, uh, well, we don't have uh, spiritual directors. We have shrinks, as you say in your language, right? <laughs> there are thousands of them. And they are very smart. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but the church fathers, they say, no, you are mistaken. There is always directors, spiritual directors, the church fathers. And especially the accredited church fathers, right? And one of them that I highly or heartily recommend to you is St. John Chrysostom, right? Because uh, he is uh, uh, giving answers for uh, any problem. I mean, even he is telling husbands that are be lazy today, right? To how to, 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 to speak to their wives. He even tells them what compliments to say, right? Yes, he says to the husband, please tell to your wife, you are, you are a flower, you are like this. And yes. Yes, you? yes, yes. You are my flower, right? So he is very human, uh, John Chrysostom. And by training, he was a lawyer, right? And an orator. So he knows life from within. This is why, I mean, uh, I again recommend John Chrysostom. Uh, he's a great theologian, but he tried not to dwell on uh, formulations of the doctrine, but uh, he tried to, uh, to translate the meaning, uh, the significance of the doctrines of the church in actual life, right? In practice. In practice, practice. that's right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you.